past week and didn't really understand or or, or know that we always like to pray for a different ministry. And so when I explained that, then he was able to understand um, that, yeah, that's a good thing. So let's pray for them and their efforts um, for uh, reaching orders for Jesus Christ. We always like to pray for our church family, for you guys, for those who are here, and uh, for your needs. Bring them before the Lord today and, and lift those up in prayer. And, uh, of course, we pray for... Uh, the one bringing the message, uh, which happened to be <laughs> me this morning. And uh, so, uh, so let's go to prayer and ask the Lord to watch over us as we, as we worship him, as we honor him today. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your goodness and your mercies towards us. Thank you for the fact that you have given us a wonderful week where we have since your presence, we knew that you were working for us, and we give you praise, and we give you thanks. We pray that you would watch over all the churches in the area and their efforts for reaching Jesus Christ. We pray especially for Village of Faith, uh, the pastor, the, the people, as they try to reach others for Jesus Christ, that you would honor their efforts. Give them fruits for their labor. We thank you. Be with our church family here this morning. Thank you for everyone. And we just pray that you will continue to touch hearts. You will continue to open doors, close doors, hearing, answering prayer. We thank you for what you are going to be doing for them. I pray especially for those who are sick and not well, that you would reach out and touch them, bring healing strengthening to their body and we should give you all the praise i pray oh god as that your word is uh, going to go forth this morning that you would use that your holy spirit would enlighten our hearts and draw us closer to you as we are being faithful stewards to you this morning in our giving in our tithes in our offering we pray that you will take what we have and that you would use it and multiply it your word says that you would open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that there would not be room enough to receive it. We thank you. We praise you. Be with our worship team as the leaders in worship. Warm our hearts and draw us closer to you. All of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Hope Community Church. I am Allison. I am a volunteer here. I have a few extra announcements for us this morning. Ladies game night has been postponed until next week because uh, this Tuesday is VBS. So you can still be involved in volunteering or bringing your child or grandchild or niece or nephew. It starts tonight at 6 p.m. at the FBC Oxford, um, right up the road from here. Um, so ladies game night's been changed and VBS is tonight. It goes until Thursday. And we also have a blood drive on Sunday, June 25th, 9 a.m. to noon here at the church. Thank you. If you're willing and able, please stand with us as we worship together. There's revival in the spirit.
Clap your hands and stomp your feet Find that gospel beat It's all you ever need Sing it again Clap your hands and stomp your feet Find that gospel beat It's all you ever need It's all Clap your hands and stomp your feet Find that gospel beat It's all you ever need It's all I got an old church class to be in God's house. Amen. I'm thankful that you guys have come here to worship and so glad for that. Like this 
this is my surrender and here is where I lay it down every lie and every doubt this is my Thank you for being here. 
showing up and being a part of this great congregation. Protect us, watch over us in your name. Amen. You may be seated. things in life are overrated. Hope is not one of them. Good morning. My name is Barb and I'm a volunteer here at Hope Community Church. When you came in the door, you should have received a program. If you didn't get one, raise your hand and someone will bring one to you right now. On the back of the program are events and announcements, so read through those each week, please. At the bottom of the program is a connection card. It's on perforated paper, so go ahead and just tear that off right now. The connection card is the way that we connect with you. So fill out as much as you feel comfortable, and we'd like for each person to do this every single week. At the end of the service, put this in the box next to the door. On the back of the connection card is the way for you to connect with us. If you're ready to serve, check serving. If you're ready to be baptized, check baptism. We also love to pray for you, so go ahead and put any prayer requests that you have in there. At the bottom of that section is called My Next Step. If God's been telling you something this week or if he gives you some prompting during the sermon, go ahead and write that in there and put this in that box next to the door. First time guests, we would love to give you a gift. So bring that connection card to the welcome table at the end of the service because we have a book and some fabulous lip balm for you today. Check in on Facebook. For each check-in, Hope Community Church gives a dollar to a local, national, or a global organization. Please see the program for this month's organization. You can give to the church by texting 352-444-1771 or putting up, put your offering in the blue box located next to the door. We hope you find the service relevant today. Please stay after for coffee and pastries. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, kids, for getting into Children's Church. Uh, someone let the word out that Pastor Don was not going to be here this morning. And uh, so when the cat is away, they what? <laughs> the mouse will play. But it's good to see all of you this morning. Good to be here. Um, upon request of uh, Matt and Diane, they are asking on June 24th, if uh, we could help out to uh, move Louise from where she's at due to circumstances beyond her control, and she would be moving back to her home in the villages, the old part of the villages. So um, if you would like to help out, mark that on your calendar. It will be June 24th. And um, what time you want us to be there, Matt? Nine or thereabouts, okay. That that will be great. And um, one more request. Apparently, uh, there was a small tornado that went through the 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 Continental Club area off of 42, 44. Sorry. And um, Selma, uh, in fact, Ruthie and Selma, uh, she comes here with her mom, and um, so. They suffered uh, a lot of damage to their home in the, in the country club area. And so I'm trying to get some help tomorrow if we could go there. So if you would like to help to do a little bit of cleaning up, uh, male or female, uh, you're welcome. I'm sure they would appreciate that. And maybe if we could plan to be there uh, by 10 o'clock. I have the address. Um, if you want that, I'll give that uh, uh, to you. It's, um, 607 Timber Trail, Wildwood. And if you want a telephone number, it's 505-617-6014. Okay? And so we will plan to, uh, to be there uh, at that time. Um, we are in a series, Not So Secret Sauce. I, um, 
I need to get my little thing here. <laughs> and uh, thank you. And uh, this is the third week that we are in the series. Pastor Don has uh, covered the uh, first couple of weeks. And, um, and so uh, today we're going to be looking at the, um, at the third week uh, in, in the series. But uh, speaking of hot sauce, I happen, well not happen, I brought it with me. This, I brought my, um, one of my secret or my favorite brand of hot sauce. And it is Matuk's. And um, they don't have this at Publix or in Dixie. You have to go to a, a place like Key Food on 200 or um, one of those places. But West Indian hot sauce, um, very, very appetizing. Um, all you need is a little bit of this sauce on your food, and it makes it very tasty. Now, if you take a little bit too much, I guarantee you that it's not going to be a secret. Okay? Um, you are going to be doing this number, <laughs> and you would go, wow, ooh, give me some water, and you would reach for something to cool your tongue off. But very, very serious seasoning. I know a few guys in here like hot sauce, like like Austin and uh, a couple others like hot sauce. <laughs> Somebody like hot sauce in the back there. But by the way, if, if you would like to have a, a little bit of this, you could tell this is, I have this about maybe two months, a little over two months, and it was yay high. So you know that I've only been using just a, a, a little bit. And, and people who come to the house and, um, and they say that they, if I have any hot sauce, if we were having a meal. Now, these guys here, um, they, are, they are little, but they are dangerously hot. In college, there was this guy. All he has to see is that your jaw is going up and down, like you're eating something. And he always come and ask, what are you eating? Cherries. It looks like a cherry. He took a bite of this. And he was screaming. He was crying. <laughs> it was so hot. That and by this time, by the way, I give when I give him one of this and I say it was it was cherry. It was so hot. By this time, I start moving away from him. And he said, eventually I heard, I am going to kill you, Zeph. <laughs> Zeph, I'm going to get you. But this is what, it's no secret when you uh, have these guys. And you know, that is to say that it should never be a secret in our Christian life. Our Christian life should show forth wherever we go, in our walk, in our talk, the way we carry ourselves out with other people, our communication. We need to let the light of Jesus shine within us. You know, what, what is funny sometimes, um, we are wearing a, a shirt or a cap or saying that I love Jesus, and then you are in the checkout line at the supermarket. And then there, something happened and the temptation is to be a little bit smart or negative. And then you remember, uh, I'm wearing a hat that says, I love Jesus. What I'm about to do does not reflect the fact that I love Jesus. So I have to, I have to be careful. Um, so we uh, want, like to look at our, our, our key passage of Scripture and of course, it's found in Second Peter, uh, chapter one, <clears throat> and verse uh, uh, three to eight. 
Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 8. His divine power, I'm reading from the NIV, by the way, might be a little bit different from the PowerPoint. His divine power has given us everything we need for life, goodness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glorious and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evildoers. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, Add to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the first week, Pastor Don covered and he talked about goodness. We have all the qualities in us because we have been changed. We are new creatures in Christ. All things are passed away and all things have become new. And so we have all the qualities within us to be good, to show goodness to other people in our neighborhood or uh, wherever we go, uh, we have the qualities to show goodness. And then the second week, Pastor Don talks about having to add to our faith knowledge. And folks, we have to agree that our culture is bankrupt of knowledge and wisdom. And how do we know that? Look at the way people live. Look at the the bad decisions they make in life. Look at what they're going through. And then we go back to the the root of all of this, you realize that they didn't have knowledge, they didn't have understanding. And so we need to be careful even to help others to say that we need to look just a little bit deeper. Uh, Yesterday I received a text from, from Sam. You remember Sam? Sam comes to church with me sometimes, sits in the back there. And uh, he sent me a text to to pray for this individual. And this individual was so troubled that he was talking suicide. And he was going through some of the same things that Sam went through when he was coming up and, and all the things that he... And he was encouraging, he was supportive, he was acting like a counselor, and he was even saying, hey, I have been there, I have done that, but God helped me out of it. Sharing his knowledge and sharing uh, what he knows that will help. And so today, we are going to look at the third concept or the third thing in our faith that we should add and that is self-control self-control add to your faith goodness to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control so how how do we how do we do that how does it happen I know that it's, it's one of the most difficult parts in our life when we, when we look at where we go, what we do, things like that, to have self-control. But everyone has probably found themselves in situation where they needed to exercise self-control and perhaps fail. But one of the one of my greatest weakness is, as you know, I've mentioned it before, is, um, is sweets. And uh, like people say they have a sweet tooth, I have sweet teeth. 
That's how powerful it is. Now, I want you to think, on Saturday morning, I go to Publix on 44, and I pick up all the bakery stuff. And I'm packing that stuff into my truck, into the boxes that I have taken. And of course, I, I make a box for House of Hope. I make a box for the guys at Sumter Tire. And when I get next to the church, I make a box for the guys in the motorcycle shop. And they appreciate that. So by doing all of that, I get to see all the stuff, especially the sweet stuff. And then I, I take out the stuff that I need to bring to the church for a snack on Sunday morning. And that's what you have there. Now, I put all of that stuff in the front seat of the truck. And if I see something, oh, I may want to take a bite of this, a bite of that. I already have my cup of coffee, and uh, that big, traveling from Bellevue all the way there. And the temptation is, is that I just need to have just a, a, a little. And I have done very well. And um, so I, I just have to not take things for granted and, uh, and be careful of, of what I do. But folks, the cravings that we experience in life today, which causes us to make decisions that we know are not very healthy for us, and it's just not only in the area of food. Think about other cravings in your life. Every area of your life, think about that. And uh, we especially think that if I could just have a little bit of that, a little bit of this, that it will fulfill my desire or it will help me, not to mention that it's just the opposite. So today what we're going to look at is that, one, we have to control the cravings. We have to control the cravings. In Galatians 5, 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. So how, how do we do that? Craving, if not, if not controlled, leaves us wanting more. I have been there. I have done that. And all of us know how this happens. We say that I would only have one of whatever it is. In this case, let's say a piece of entomon or one of the stuff that you have in the back. And then before you know it, that one is gone and you reach for another. And that is gone and you reach for another and another. And before you, you know it, everything is just totally out of control. A guy walk into a bar or a place where he can pick up a drink or whatever. And he says, well, I'm going to have a pre dinner drink. You know how that goes in our society. Uh, they claim that that helps them to eat a lot better. I don't know because I've not done that. And then before you know it, one drink leads to another and to another. Next thing you know that a cab is taking him home because he's too drunk to drive. And even being dangerous to drive and to be, to be on the road. So we have to control the craving uh, because it's leaving us wanting more. Self-control is managed by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God which dwells within us. And so first of all, folks, what we need to realize is that we need to make sure that we have the Holy Spirit within us, that God's Spirit is abiding in our hearts and in our lives. We cannot call on something or someone. We cannot reach into the bag to get something or whatever we're looking for 
and it's not there. And that is God's Holy Spirit. We want to make sure that it is there that God's Holy Spirit serve as a check mark in our lives. It brings conviction to us, reminding us that we shouldn't do it. And when God's Holy Spirit put that check mark to us, it gives us the power to say no. The Holy Spirit would help us to have self-control because it abides within our hearts and within our lives. Self-control is a byproduct of submission. It's a byproduct of submission. First of all, submission has to do with every area of our lives. We cannot say that, well, I'm going to submit certain areas of my life, but the other areas of my life, I think I'm capable of managing that. Only to find out that we can't, and it gives us trouble. But once we turn everything over, we have better control Submission to the way of Jesus rather than to the way of self. Give it over. Even when we submit that area of our lives, we call it by name. We are being specific that, Lord, I surrender, I submit this area of my life to you. A lot of times people uh, speak in generalities and and help me God or whatever, but they are not being specific as to what you want God to do. Name it and claim it in the name of Jesus. A lack of control can be destructive, not only to ourselves, but to others. We can do some serious damage to ourselves, physically, mentally, emotionally. It can even result in someone going to jail or you being in the hospital. But think of what that lack of self-control can cause. Others think about what that does to the family, to the wife, to the children, to the parents. Think about your fellow Christians your employer, your employee, how that affects everyone. But we need to exercise and we need to have self-control. Self-control is protection against temptation. It protects us against temptation. In Proverbs 25 and verse 28, it says this, Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. In Romans 8, 5, and 6, it says this, the Apostle Paul, Those who live according to the sinful nature have their mind set on what that nature desires. But those who live according with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death. The mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Temptation is no respecter of person. Temptation comes to all. You could be a doctor, an attorney, a president. You could have a PhD, a master's degree, a bachelor. You could be CEO in a management uh, of some kind. Even to pastors, temptation comes. As a member of the leadership team in the church or any other uh, churches, a church member for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, temptation still comes to everyone. As a matter of fact, anyone who believes in Jesus Christ, anyone who proclaim Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior, and that He has brought about a change in your life, anyone who confess that, Satan is going to be after you. Because he does not like the idea 
that you trust Jesus with your life, that you belong to him. But we have this positive attitude that, that we are going to make sure that it doesn't matter how long I have been a Christian, but I need to be careful. Here is a, here is a positive side according to James. In James chapter 1, uh, this is not on the PowerPoint like you know. You know, when you go through your notes and pre preparation, you already submit stuff. And, uh, but this is what James 2, 1, 2 to 4 says. Count it all joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develop perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. Uh, let's focus just for a moment on when James says, count it all joy. James, are you, are you really serious that when we go through all of this in life, that we should count it all joy, that we should be joyful? And James, James was right because he was writing for, from experience. The fact is that temptation has revealed an area in your life that you didn't probably know exists or is going to give you trouble. But temptation has revealed that area in your life that you need to pay attention to. And you say, okay, this is where the joy is. This is where I need to uh, pay attention and to work in it so that I do not, I do not fall. Temptation is not sin. Okay, temptation is not sin. But temptation says, will you do this or will you do that? Temptation is saying that we need to say no to the things that we need to say no to and say yes to the things that we need to say yes to. And that's so very important. Temptation reveals that area, like I said, in your life that we need to work on. But yielding is sin. When we yield to the temptation, when we cross over that line and we say yes to the tempter, and then we have committed sin. Each time we engage self-control, we become stronger and stronger. And when that temptation comes, it's like going against a brick wall and bounces right back because we have been using self-control. We have been grounded deeper and stronger in Jesus Christ. And so when that temptation comes and we use self-control, that is what happens. And we don't have to think twice that it is wrong, it is not right, it is contrary to the word of God, to the Christian life. We don't have to think twice. As soon as it comes, we know that the answer is no. Get thee behind me, Satan. And that's what we need to be focused on. The power of delayed gratification. Folks, how well we remember that we would love to have immediate gratification. Right then when we pray and when we seek God, all of us want that. But you know something, folks? Down the road, when God shows up, the timing could not have been better when he reached out to us and he answered our prayer. So in the meantime, what do we do? Be patient. We say, God, when are you going to show up? When are you going to give an answer to this? 
let me assure you that the answer is on its way. We just have to dig our heels in and keep on praying and just hang in there. Be patient. Be consistent in your prayer. Don't stop praying for whatever that situation is. That God may not give us the satisfaction and, or that, you know, that right away uh, thing that we need, gratification. But keep on, keep on praying. James 5, 16 says, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Folks, did you hear that what James says? That it is powerful and it is effective. So continue to pray. God may seem to be silent. He may seem to be different. But God knows your heart. And he hears your prayer. And in his timing. He will show up. You will be blessed. Talking about delayed gratification. It may not happen just now, a week, two weeks, a month, a year, but it's coming. You will be blessed because of your self-control, God will pour you out his blessing. God will come before you and he will assure you of all that there is for you. In James chapter 1 and verse 12, it says this, Blessed is the man who perseveres on the trial. Because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. God has promised us a crown of life. So it's not only here and now that we would experience his blessing, but down the road we would receive his blessing as well. That if we stay faithful, that we would receive the crown of life. Yes, self-control is difficult, but it's not impossible. It is difficult, but not impossible. Because greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world. His word also says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As you focus, as all of us focus this morning on, on self-control, I don't know what that area in your life is that you have most difficulty with, but you are trying to work on self-control. Yesterday, I visited with this gentleman. I just wanted to pick his brains and see where he's at. And I said, hey, what, what in your life that you have problem with self-control? And he started to share with me. And without going in further detail, I said, I'm going to pray with you. Thank you for sharing that. And I know that many, many people today struggle with something in their lives with self-control. And as we close in prayer, I would like to pray for you this morning. And God knows your heart. He knows what you're going through. Is there something in your life that you would like to indicate that pray for me? that I have some issues with that area in my life and I want to trust God. God knows our heart. He knows your need today. And I'm going to pray that God reach out and touch those who have lifted their hands for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your goodness and for your mercies. We thank you 
for the Holy Spirit being our teacher this morning, for enlightening our hearts. And Lord, we know that you have not promised us a bed of roses. But as we go through life, there will be things in our life that we struggle with. But we want to be closer, drawn to you. And so this morning, I pray, oh God, that you would watch over those that have struggles with that area in their life. And I pray that you will give victory. I pray, oh God, that you would hear and answer their prayer as that is being presented to you this morning. We thank you. We praise you. And we claim that in the name of Jesus. Bless us today. And continue to watch over us. In Jesus' name, amen.
As you wait for the crown, tell the world of the treasure you found. Just do that this morning. Just lay down your burdens. He's faithful. 